Welcome to St. Timothy Lutheran Church in Tarpon Springs, Florida. We are so glad that you've joined us for worship, and this is our All Saints celebration. The color is white, that color which Christ makes our robes when we've been washed clean in the blood of the Lamb, as we will hear in Revelation, that forward-looking time. And so we celebrate to give thanks to God for his salvation and his presence, the God who made all things, made himself known to us in Jesus Christ. He died on the cross to take away everything that would ever separate us from the Father. He rose from the dead to show us we need not be afraid of anything and sent the Holy Spirit to guide us every step of the way. And so we celebrate on this day also those folks in our lives, those who have gone before us, those who are with us now, and those who will come after us, who will shine the light of Christ into the world that others may come to know. We call them the saints in our life, these imperfect people that were forgiven and cleansed by Jesus and made his kingdom and his word known to us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so uh, in our congregation, we so value uh, daily Bible reading. I can't say enough to stay in the scriptures. Continue to read them. If you need a devotional, please come by the church. We'd be happy to share one with you um, to get with other people and uh, discuss the word and um, just stay in the word. It's a great way for us to learn about God's heart, God's character, who God is. The more we stay in it, the more we see through that lens in our daily life and it gives us hope in a dark and dying world. And so stay in the scriptures. When I talk about being with other people, um, you can get with us on some of our Zoom Bible studies, and uh, they continue. We have one on Tuesday from 1 to 2 p.m. Um, we're currently learning about the lives of Jesus' disciples, uh, a, descript- a scripture discussion based on in the class. On Wednesday nights, we have 7 to 8 p.m., Uh, Bible study on the weekly lectionary. That's the lessons that we'll be having here in worship on Sunday. And then uh, everyone is welcome to experience, no experience is necessary uh, for those Bible studies. Our youth group continues to meet. Uh, The next meeting is November 8th from 5 uh, o'clock to 6 o'clock. Cross Trainers meets the second and fourth Sunday of every month from 5 to 6. All youth currently in fifth grade all the way through high school are encouraged to come and join together and uh, to increase in our discipleship, our prayer, focused on scripture, talking about what's going on in our lives, and usually having a game or two even on Zoom. And so uh, we start to talk about how we might even come together um, as person to person. Our confirmation classes continue Wednesday at 5.30. It's available on Zoom for mentors or anyone who would like to audit the class. Currently, we're uh, in the New Testament and talking about the New Testament, so if you'd like to join us for that, that's Wednesdays at 5.30 on Zoom. Uh, you can get those uh, numbers by calling in to the church or discipleship at mylutheran.com uh, to get some of the information for that. The other thing that we do is that we have the gift of the Holy Spirit. And James, it says, you don't have because you don't ask. And so we learn to pray about everything. It's a discipline that teaches us and uh, to trust more in God's wisdom than our understanding. And so we continue to pray about everything. Uh, We have a centering prayer, uh, a contemplative reading reflection group from 6 to 7 on Thursdays. Uh, They'll be taking a break and will not be meeting uh, November, December. So if you're interested in practicing centering prayer or interested in finding more information about it as a personal spiritual practice, please contact Mary Dellison. We continue to have our uh, midweek Uh, contemplative service for you to do at home and uh, just to be still and to allow the scriptures to wash over you. You can find that on our webpage on the very front, so just click on there. Also, we'd love to thank everyone who participated in our prayer partners. We continue to do that. Um, The prayer partners will be sent out this week. Uh, We're always looking for more people to help. You're given like three to five members of the congregation to pray for, most importantly, and if you'd like to contact them through a letter, a note, a text, Uh, a phone call uh, to let them know that you're praying for them. Uh, Please, if you'd like to be a part of this ministry, it's a great way to keep us connected and supporting each other and always a good thing, whether we're in a pandemic or not, to be praying for each other. So call Mary uh, here or on the website, uh, discipleship at mylutheran.com. Please continue to send your prayer requests and praise reports into the office so that we can pray together. We can have it here at worship Uh, in our prayers so that others can learn what's going on and be praying for those things as well. And just a reminder to continue your weekly offering. You can mail your envelope into the church. Use Give Plus, our online giving link, which is on the front page of our website, or 
to our Give Plus app, which is available to download onto your phone. You can also use bill pay through your own bank or drop your offering off at the church office. Call first for um, the office hours. So that said, now let us uh, prepare our hearts for worship of the triune God as we begin our worship through our prelude on this All Saints Sunday. When the saints go marching in Now let us call upon the living and triune God to lead our hearts in worship and spirit and in truth this day. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Amen. I invite you to humbly kneel before our God and to make confession in your heart, that is to repent and turn your heart and your life back to God's heart and life. If you cannot kneel, you may certainly stand or sit. Holy One, we confess confess that we are not not awake awake for for you. We are not not faithful in using your gifts. gifts. We forget the least least of our siblings. siblings. We We do do not not see your beautiful beautiful image in one another. We We are infected by by sin that divides your beloved community. community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. Amen. We continue with our opening hymn, Rise Up, O Saints of God. Rise, 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 rise,
our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace be with you all. And also with you. Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. Let us join our hearts and voices together in the prayer of the day. Almighty, Almighty God, God, you have knit your people together, together in, in one, one communion, communion, in, in the mystical, mystical body, body of your, your Son, Son Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Grant, grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment. And and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the proclamation of God's word. First reading comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and the peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, these are they who have come out from of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made for them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eye. Here ends the first reading. Thanks, Thanks, be, Thanks to God. be to God.
The second reading this evening is the first letter of John, chapter 3, beginning with the first verse. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. words of eternal life for today are recorded in the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The gospel of of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. Psalm 34, 9. Oh, fear the Lord, you his holy ones, for those who fear the Lord have no want. Remember, fear is to have awe and respect. Those who fear the Lord have no want. So I'd like to engage your imagination, and I want you to think about an, an image that I think kind of embodies much of what the Scripture is trying to tell us today. Imagine, if you will, a small child, a toddler. They go out into the world with their loving parent, and the toddler encounters the unknown. Immediately, they race and they jump up into their parents' arms. Pressed up against their heart, all of a sudden, they are content. They are happy. They are blessed. They are secure there in that place with those arms wrapped around them, their body pressed up against theirs. Now they can take on the whole world, whatever comes their way in those arms of love. In a big, bad world, the child's trust is not in themselves but in their parent, to preserve, protect, provide, love, redeem, teach, and guide. Those things that I all mentioned, by the way, those are the activity of the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, to protect, preserve, provide, to love, to redeem, to teach, and to guide. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Content indeed are those who allow themselves to be wrapped up in the arms of of God in this big bad world. Amidst the pandemic and economic uncertainty, political struggle, division all around us, tensions running high, people being emotionally spent and wanting all this to be over, Psalm 34, 22 says to us today, the Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Kind of sounds like what we hear in John 3, 18 from our Lord Jesus. He says, for those who believe in Jesus are not condemned. Like children, safe in the, parents of their arm, in the arms of their parents. No matter what's going on in our world and in our lives, just like a small child's heart rate calms as they hide themselves in the embrace of their loving parent, so we have peace when we take refuge in the Lord. In the lesson we heard from 1 John, one of the things we need to know when he uses the word eternal life, as God's children, it is not just a future hope, but a current reality. It's not just that it will be ours, it's that it is ours right now. No matter what our struggle in life, the joyful song of the saints that sin and death have been overcome and the future is open and eternal rings through history into the body of believers today. In the eighth chapter of Romans, it starts, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. When we're focusing on ourselves, we don't hear that. When we focus on God, we hear it and receive it as good news. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. When we live our lives trusting the condemnation has been lifted through the word and promise of God, the Holy Spirit lifts up our life song into a dark night of this world, directing others to our hope in Christ. This is All Saints Sunday. And we thank God for the people in our life who in grateful response have placed their ultimate hope in the coming kingdom of God. And it shows in their living through the work of the Holy Spirit communicating to our hearts that there is now no condemnation in the Lord. And the Spirit works through that, that we might have that same peace and become part of the body of Christ. Real people with all their struggles and sins, just like us, that's who they are. Sometimes we think of saints as those who are above it all and without any struggle. We easily imagine that if we struggle and we are faithless, that if we doubt or fear, we are letting God down. I've heard this a lot as a pastor, and it's just not true. 
We're sinful human beings. We're going to experience these things. Jacob, when he wrestles with God, remember Jacob, it means supplanter, one who takes something that isn't his. That was his identity. And then God blesses him and gives him a new name, Israel. Israel, it means one who strives with God, or that word strives can be interpreted also struggles with God. Even after the blessing, he's one who struggles with God. Martin Luther wrote of the marks of the church, one of them was struggle. That where there is faith, there is also struggle. May we be reminded today that struggle and doubt, feeling overwhelmed, wondering if God is there, aren't signs of failure or a lack of faith but are actually a witness to profound faith as we wrestle with deep questions and thereby take God seriously, coming to him with our honest confession. Think about it, if you will, again, back to that toddler. Little children, they naturally ask questions of those that they trust as they grow. And so it would be for us as children of the Almighty that we could never begin to understand completely that we would have questions. And he's like, ask me, come to me. Think of how many laments there are in the scriptures. There's a whole book called Lamentations. Also in the Psalms, we hear these laments crying out in our struggle for God to come because we just don't understand and it's hard for us and we're almost dying here, Lord. Can you help us? We hear it throughout the scriptures. We hear from Jesus today, blessed are those who are spiritually bankrupt. And blessed are those who struggle, we might hear. Blessed are those who don't have it all together, poor in spirit, because they know that they are totally dependent on God if they're going to get out of any of this. Take Revelation, for instance. That letter was written as a word of encouragement, hope, and comfort to Christians who were struggling with enormous loss of identity, division in the church, complacency, and the threat of persecution, loss, and death. All of that was going on to the people that John writes to those seven churches, and it still goes on today. We see those same things happening today in the church now, the church around the world. Persecution still goes on. Things are hard. There's division in the church. John encourages them to take the next step toward a future not defined by their past or their fear in the present. The good news is not in ourselves, but in God. What God has, is, and will be doing, as we hear in Revelation. God promised Abraham his descendants in the faith would be more than he could count, more than the stars of the sky. Uh, For example, you get to that 144,000 people get hung up on that. It's simply a number for completeness. But right after that, it says this. In Revelation, we hear that this promise made to Abraham is fulfilled. There will be too many to count. It goes on in verse 9. A multitude so great that no one can count from every nation, all tribes, peoples, and languages will stand before the throne and the Lamb robed in white with palm branches in their hands. The central image of Revelation is salvation. It's God's victory. It keeps coming back to it again and again and calls us to repent, to turn back to it and live. This is not cause for fear, but for rejoicing. It is fuel for the saints, for those who believe in Jesus, those who know that there is no condemnation in the Lord. This is the promise fulfilled through the cross of Jesus Christ. The countless multitudes have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb, in Jesus' righteousness given freely to us in our baptism as a gift. Luther points out to us, the Holy Spirit made me holy, kept me in the faith, and makes holy the whole Christian church on earth through the abundant forgiveness of sins. This is a gift of God that's been given to us that I proclaim to you today. No one can boast. The challenge for all disciples of Jesus is to live in the reality of today's hurts and pains and confusion while trusting in God's promises for the future right now. In Psalm 34, the holy ones are simply the ones who fear the Lord, have awe and respect for our Lord. Those who trust the Lord and obey Him, the humble 
those who take refuge and abide in the Lord, or in short, are totally dependent on God. They lack no good thing. It is not unlike the list that Jesus proclaims today. Think about it. Blessings which don't depend on possessions, circumstances, or good luck. None of those make up for the blessings. It's a blessing that God gives us now which nothing can take away. It's a blessing which causes us to look forward to the righteousness and peace of God's final kingdom ahead of us. The Beatitudes are really a picture of God's kingdom on earth and what it looks like, which is upside down from the kingdom of this world, which is why it looks so different. I mean, let's face it. We would look at this list of blessing and go, these are the people who are blessed? We don't see it that way in this world. Jesus has just announced that the kingdom of heaven has come near and invited people to repent in Matthew 4, 17. So blessing is announced to people who are at peace or content with the blessings from God rather than the values of the world. Let me say that again. Blessing is announced to people who are at peace or content in the blessings from God rather than the values of the world. True happiness comes from life with God, we hear. The Beatitudes, or blessings, proclaim a trust that God will bring about salvation despite appearances. In the world's value, blessing is, we would say, wealth, status, being pain-free, strong, beautiful, clever, self-sufficient, protecting my rights, getting revenge, indulging myself, winning conflicts, and avoiding all trouble or misfortune. Those would be seen as blessings in the world that we live in. But these are also the same things that Satan would call us to. Look at me, glorify me. It's all about me. Make me better. These values tempt our hearts to focus on ourselves, our self-glorification, and seeking security apart from God. But in these things we would call blessings. Each of the Beatitudes, or heavenly blessings, reveals God's power at work in our lives and our world to save us. Jesus welcomes into the kingdom those who don't have what it takes to be in the kingdom. It's pure gift, we see clearly. Jesus flips everything around and blesses those who are emptied, the poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, those who yearn for righteousness. What is the common ground with all of these? All of them know that they are not righteous within themselves. They all know that they need God. Those who have few spiritual strengths in verse 3. Those who grieve over suffering and sin in verse 4 that they cannot fix. Those who persist in gentleness in verse 5 amidst increasing hostility in our world. Those who yearn for God's will to be done in verse 6 and 8 when my will pulls so strongly away from his. All these are focused not on themselves but on God. They are not particularly successful people by the world standards but they matter to God. We all matter to God. Showing once again God is glorified in our weakness to show his glory, his grace, and his power. So we will recognize who the true source of power is, God Almighty. Mercy starts to grow out of the heart set on God. It is in forgiving that we are forgiven in Christ. In verse 7, what we would call being merciful. We're merciful with others because God has been merciful to us. It is the single-minded desire to live in God's ways that starts to purify us or makes us pure in heart. It is being willing to make peace with others in verse 9. It is to live this way even when it means you have to pay the price for doing so that we hear of in verse 10 through 12. Mercy persists in the face of persecution, whether it's being excluded, mocked, or physically harmed. We remember in James, mercy triumphs over judgment. Mercy triumphs over judgment. 
The Holy Spirit works through the saints, that is those who believe, those who know they need God and are nothing without God, these forgiven sinners, those whose hearts have surrendered to complete dependence on God. Now, this may make us think of the word martyrs. Martyrs, it means witnesses. You don't have to die to be a martyr. Witnesses in living our hope in Christ and his coming kingdom every day, all the time, wherever we are. In 1 John, we hear that the world didn't know Jesus. So, they're not going to know the things of Jesus being done through us because it's not about our recognition or our glory. They didn't get Jesus, so they crucified him, and God turned the suffering and death into mercy, life, and salvation. Trust that God will turn our suffering that comes from loving the world for his sake into the glory that is to be revealed in the kingdom. Jesus sees our struggles. He knows our grief, and he is with us. He has absorbed them into the cross and bears them with us even now. For Christ has promised us that he will wipe away every tear from our eyes. In our scary world, we may run and jump into the arms of our loving heavenly parent. May the Holy Spirit fill us richly with the blessings of God, emptying us of the world's way and filling us with Christ, with the confidence that there is no condemnation in the Lord. Rise up, O saints of God. And may the peace of God, which passes all of our understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Let us all join together and reconfirm our belief by the saying of Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. earth. I, believe I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, our Lord. Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of all saints, we praise you for evangelists and martyrs whose sacrifices witness to your gospel across time and space. Inspire us by their courage to carry our faith to new people and places around us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, your mercy is Lord. great. Lord of every place, the universe proclaims your greatness from generation to generation. Bless the work of naturalists, conservationists, and park rangers who train our attention to the wonders of the world you have made. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Lord of every nation, guide this country, red states, blue states, rural voters, urban voters, young and old. As we share in another national election, kindle hearts eager to understand our common needs and seek our common good. Hear us, O Lord. Your mercy is great. Lord of every blessing, your son's blessing came to those living with poverty, grief, hunger, thirst, and persecution. Shape our vision of the saints to match his own. We place in your care those that are heavy on our hearts, those on our prayer list, those that we name before you now and the silence of our own hearts. For those affected by natural disasters and protect even now those who might be affected by the hurricane, for our country's division, we ask for healing. We pray that you would be with us for the election. We pray for Roland and Joanne for healing strength and peace for Sam and Paula's children, for Derek for healing, for strength and comfort, Cheryl for continued prayers for healing, for Carol Weaver for healing from pneumonia, for Barbara Huth for healing from pneumonia, for Bud Gerard for healing, he currently has a broken leg, for Sullen White healing from heart surgery, Cheryl Weaver recovery from surgery, for Barbara, for Patrick Berry for recovering from back surgery, for Natalie's brother, Jeff, for answers of diagnosis and for healing. For Tom Hill, for your protective care on him. For Norma Jean, Rosemary's sister, who is facing imminent death, we pray for your peace and your comfort. For John Adams, for Lisa and Paul's friend, still positive for COVID. For Michelle Permuto's sister, Jackie, having surgery on November 5th. For these and others, Lord, we hold them before you, knowing that you are good and faithful. Awaken in us your call to serve all who suffer. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Lord of every venture, anoint us with the missionary spirit of the early church. Bless all new missions of our synod. Empower testimony from new communities of faith to shape a diverse witness to your saving power. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your many blessings. Please teach us to be grateful. Teach us to count our blessings. Teach us to see the blessings and to share them as a sign of our hope in your coming kingdom and our trust that you are the great provider. 
We thank you for so many things, but we thank you today for the life of Betty Skumatz, who passed from death to life, Ed Fitzsimmons, who passed from death to life, for Lauren Solberg, who's home and healing. We thank you for the birthdays of Justina Thompson, for Richard Johnson, for Patricia Bailey, for James Hibbs, and Deborah Galerter. For these and for other thanksgivings, we hold them before you in celebration. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Lord of every time, countless are the multitudes you have called by name and gathered to yourself. Comfort us as we grieve those who have died in the past year. John Thompson. Ellen Barkas. Carl Noblesdorf. Dan Kovar. Ken Sawatka. Leslie Graff. Buck Snare. Joe Judge. Evelyn Graham. Jean Favero, Bill Devardi, Hal Cook, Betty Skumatz. Ed Fitzsimmons. In faith, may we join with them in ceaseless praise. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. 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 Praying together as Jesus taught us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn, Shall We Gather at the River?